是他们。Greetings, everybody. Punisher Comics here, and happy Sunday. So I'll be honest with you. I was gonna do this yesterday, but since I am still getting over the lingering effects of a cold, I decided to take yesterday as a me day.、Uh, I hit up an LCS near me and、um, took advantage of their little weekend spring break sale they were having. Um, all their back issues were 50% off. Recent back issues were a buck, and my highlight from yesterday was this right here. It is Doctor Strange issue number 180. I got this for like six bucks. Yeah, and I've always loved this Eternity cover, and I believe this is a Steve Ditko cover. I could be wrong. But I'm sure someone out there will let me know in the comments below. <laughs>、uh, I also managed to pick up、uh, an issue of Ghosts for my run, and、uh, as for the one dollar recent back issues, I picked up some of the、uh, Marvel Star Wars stuff、um, in like the early '30s. And I mean, I I haven't. I haven't picked up any、um, Star Wars stuff, the the main Star Wars series that is, since like issue sixteen.、Uh, I stopped it there, and at the same time,、uh, I continued with Darth Vader instead. But I decided a little while back I wanted to slowly fill in the holes and get up to the most current issue. Of course, the most current issue of Star Wars now is like around sixty something, so. I got some filling to do, <laughs> but yeah, I got I got a couple issues in like the the 30s area of the run. I got one of the annuals, and I think I got like issue 51 or something, just because I had a really cool Darth Vader. Ah,、uh, not Darth Vader. Sorry, Darth Vader's in the issue. I I read it this morning. Ah,、uh, no, um, Millennium Falcon cover. Just really really cool. Anyway. And、um, so yeah, so I got some of those, and I'm gonna slowly start picking up some Star Wars back issues here and there. Anyway, we're not here to talk comics; we're here to talk movies. Because as I promised this past week,、uh, I said this weekend we'd be talking about Aquaman. So here we are. And uh, of course, uh, I know there are still a few of you out there who have not seen this movie. So spoiler alert. And believe it or not, up until about two days ago, I was one of you. Yes,、um, I did not go see Aquaman in the theater. No, it wasn't a protest or anything.、Uh, just when it came out, you know, life got in the way and everything, and I just didn't get a chance to go see it.、Uh, which is really weird because usually, whenever a superhero movie comes out within like the first week, I go and see it. Like, take this weekend for instance. Uh, while you guys are comfortably at home watching moi, I'm actually at the theater right now with my cousin watching Captain Marvel, and it's safe to say that next weekend I will be reviewing that movie. So,、uh, so yeah, and this is opening weekend and whatnot. Anyway, so、uh, yeah, so for those of you out there who have not seen Aquaman yet,、uh, I highly suggest you stop watching right now if you don't want to hear anything about it. You want to discover it for yourself, blah blah blah. But for those of you out there who do not care about spoilers and whatnot, well, be my guest and continue watching. Alrighty, so let's get down to it, shall we? Now, as always, when I do these reviews, I always、uh, mention the plot first, and then dive into what I thought of the movie, etc., etc. So the plot of Aquaman is as follows. When Orm, A.K.A. Ocean Master, played by the awesome Patrick Wilson, and I might、uh, or I shall I sh blah, 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 blah. let me add that this is not Patrick Wilson's first rodeo when it comes to playing a role in a superhero movie.、Uh, a lot of you may remember him from years back playing Night Owl in Watchmen. So. Yeah, so when Orm, the newly crowned ruler of Atlantis, 
declares war on dry land, Arthur Curry, played by the ever so hunky Jason Momoa, aka Aquaman, uh, must fulfill his destiny and take his place as the king of Atlantis. So there you have it, folks. There's there's the plot. Let it let it sink in a bit. Let it stew a little. All right. Okay. Oh, I can continue. Okay. So let's dive into my thoughts and whatnot on the movie. All right. So for starters, I'll admit that I was not among the, or sorry, I I was actually among the, shall we say, less optimistic moviegoers that figured there was no way Aquaman could really add up to much of a movie. Now, I, I really like Jason Momoa. I mean, every time I see him at cons and whatnot, he he is, you know, one of the guys. And when I see little videos of him on YouTube and everything, I mean, he's a he's a beer swilling, party going. He's he's an animal. He is a beast. <laughs> so yeah, he's awesome. But the character's part in Justice League uh, didn't really give me any reason to believe that the character was worth a hundred and fifty million plus dollar spinoff. You know, besides things like you know where he's riding on the Batmobile, <laughs> Batmobile, and he's all like you know my man and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's cool, but can they really do a full length movie? Well, luckily, director James Wan clearly has just the right take on the material to make it a truly fun action extravaganza. And much has been made about how one ditches the dark tone of the DCU and opts for a colorful and lighthearted adventure, more in the vein of say, Romancing the Stone, than other movies of its ilk. And the fact is, Aquaman doesn't need to be dark and brooding like pretty much every other DCU movie. And the lighthearted vibe really adds to a, um, well, at the time when this movie came out, a surefire Christmas hit that serves as a great introduction to a couple of characters that I think should be around for a rather long time. Uh, one thing they really ace here is the chemistry between Momoa and co-star Amber Heard. Uh, she plays Mira, and she is a heroine, <coughs> excuse me, in her own right, and the dynamic is very interesting. Uh, while under the sea, and yes, if you need to, feel free to sing the song from Little Mermaid. Have you gotten it out of your system? Eh, I can continue now. Okay. So yeah, so while under the sea... Uh, Mira is shown to be the more powerful warrior, having a mastery of the environment uh, and whatnot, only for the positions to be to you know to swap once they hit land. So they both get the opportunity to you know be each other's foil. I'm also a big fan of legit romance in my action adventure films. I find it's uh, it's a must. It, I find it helps, you know, the story and everything. And here, in this movie, it's it's a major component rather than just you know some window dressing. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, you buy that they're actually attracted to each other, and gradually falling in love. And by the time it ends, you're like, mm, fully invested. 
Uh, the supporting cast in this movie is similarly good. Uh, with the big standout being, and I'm probably going to butcher his name, so I apologize, um, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as, of course, Black Manta, a slick modern-day pirate with a very understandable grudge against our hero. And clearly DC is really investing big time in this character. And watching him in this movie, uh, it's not hard to imagine Mateen becoming a big time star as well. <laughs> Nicole Kidman. I mean, wow. Uh, she, she also seems to be having a blast uh, playing Atlanta, who is, of course... Aquaman's mom and it's so much fun to see her dive headfirst into you know action heroine mode and it's funny because I'm usually not a fan of um, you know big time critical darlings let's call them playing parts in superhero movies as it always feels like they're really, you know, phoning it in. But one has to give Kidman and Willem Dafoe, who, of course, like Patrick Wilson, this too is not his, you know, first rodeo playing in a superhero movie. I mean, we all remember him as the Green Goblin in Spider-Man 1, right? But, uh, yeah, you know, cre credit really has to... We, we really have to give credit to um, Nicole Kidman and Willem Dafoe. I mean, both are, are fully committed and really seem to be having a straight-up blast. And uh, as well, I'm probably going to butcher his first name too, so again, I apologize. Uh, Tamura Morrison also has a lot of charm as... Um, Aquaman's lighthouse keeper dad, while Dolph Lundgren looks to be having the time of his life as Mira's father Nearest. So, the comeback continues. <laughs> um, my only gripe is with Patrick Wilson. <laughs> the equally awesome Patrick Wilson. Um... I really like him as an actor. As I mentioned before, he was Night Owl in Watchmen, and I I liked him in Watchmen. He was also in, uh, was it Annabelle or whatever? And I thought he did a good job in that movie too. Anyway, but Orm, or Ocean Master, however you want to say his name, uh, I think kind of needed to be a little more larger than life which is what the other actors all are whereas Wilson I find is a little too low-key and I know some of you are probably yelling at your computer screens right now or your cell phones watching this especially if you're Patrick Wilson fans and I apologize but again these are just my thoughts so I'm going to express them. But yes, I find Wilson is just a little too low-key and not a very convincing threat for the more <laughs> gigantic Momoa. Uh, a major physical presence was needed, I find, in the part. Similar to how, say, uh, Michael B. Jordan worked in Black Panther. You know, they were very... On the same level. Him and, um... Oh, what the hell is his name? The one who played Black Panther. Uh, the, oh, Jesus. I forget his name now. Anyway, you get the picture. Now, otherwise, though, Aquaman is a pretty perfect blockbuster concoction. Uh, it's silly at times, but everything is basically so much fun that you, you simply won't care. Uh, Juan also refreshingly has made the rare 
brightly colored action flick with gorgeous cinematography by Mr. Don Burgess. And, uh, you know, movies that shoot too dark, i.e. solo, are my pet peeve. <coughs> Excuse me. As is the over-reliance uh, on the colors orange and teal. But Aquaman doesn't do either of those things. Another merit that really kicks it up a notch in my book. <coughs> oh my god, excuse me. I have this dry cough right now. Oh, it sucks. Anyway. But basically, between Bumblebee, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and this, and Aquaman, I think uh, at the time all these came out, uh, fans were, were being particularly well served um, for the holiday season. So, to wrap things up, I say to all of you out there watching this, go out and make sure all these, these new movies coming out really get the, uh, the support they deserve. So, that's, that's that. Oh, and as for my rating of Aquaman, I give it a very solid 8 out of 10. Very, very good movie. I, I really liked it, so so that's that. And, um, well, there's not much else to say. <laughs> so, folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, review of Aquaman. Uh, if you did, give her a thumbs up. If not, give her a thumbs down. And if you enjoy movie reviews like this one, well, I highly suggest you check out the playlist I put together of all my other movie reviews. Also, uh, while looking around the channel, make sure to comment on any video you like, because I love reading them, as well as answering them. And also, while looking around, make sure to like or dislike any video you watch. Yes, I did say dislike, because let's face it, folks, no one's perfect, right? And then, when all is said and done, before leaving, make sure to click that subscribe button. Alrighty? So that's it for me, and as I said, most likely next weekend I will be reviewing Captain Marvel, and, uh, you know, I know it's getting a lot of flack right now because of stuff that Brie Larson said, so to a lot of the ones who take that stuff to heart, you know, I technically shouldn't be going to see it because I'm a white male, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm a comic book fan. And this is a comic book movie, so therefore, I'm going to watch it. And most likely, I'm going to enjoy it. Or, as you guys are watching this, I'm probably enjoying it right now. <laughs> you know? So, I, I'm not taking any of that to heart. Uh, I, I have not checked anything out online. Because, uh, as I always say, going into these movie, uh, these comic book movies, I like to be my own critic. And, um, like with Venom, I, I'm going, or I went in with very low expectations, and, uh, we're gonna see how I come out of Captain Marvel. Uh, in Venom's case, I enjoyed it, so, who knows? I'll, I'll come out of Captain Marvel going, wow, that was a good movie, because I know it's already, like, blowing up, like, the charts. So far, as of Saturday, I think... It, it hit what? Uh, is it 53 or 153 million already? So, and like 455 million, like worldwide or something? Like, yeah, this, this is going to be a juggernaut movie. So, it is what it is. So, I'll let you guys know next weekend. I'm starting to ramble. <laughs> Sorry. So yes, yeah, so uh, till next time, folks, which uh, will either be Wednesday or Friday, whenever I decide to do my next Regrettables video. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, again, getting over the cold and everything, you know, on Wednesdays, I'll, I'll try and sit here at the desk and bang out a video, and there's a lot of times it just it doesn't work. You know, I'm, I'm lucky I, I got so far today in this video because, like I said, sometimes I just I 
cough and cough and it's just it's hard to to talk uh, as much as I do for a video so we'll see Wednesday or Friday either or I'll, I'll have your next regrettables video or should I say regrettables video alrighty so till next time folks I'm Punisher Comics and I am out <laughs>